Hello grade 12 and welcome to yet another video, lesson 5. We are going to be working specifically with data handling. And before we can start with the lesson, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So we are now working with data handling and as we all know, data handling has two measures of summarizing data. Remember data handling, it's all about summarizing data. So we have two measures of summarizing data, which is measures of central tendency and measures of spread. So on the measures of central tendency, we have the mean, the mode, and the median. And on the measures of spread, we have the range, the five number summary, and the interquartile range. So we're going to start with the measures of central tendency. So we are going to work with these numbers here, these values here. And remember that always before you can start to answer any question regarding um, data handling, you have to put your values in a descending order. I mean, sorry, in an ascending order, starting from the smallest value to the biggest value. So I have already made that for you just to make things simpler. So now we're going to start with the mean. The formula to calculate the mean says that it's sum of values divided by the number of values. So this means that you have to say to add all these numbers together and divide by the number of how many these numbers are. So you're going to say three, plus 5, plus 9, plus 12, plus 12, plus 13, plus 15, plus 19, plus 23, plus 26. So we want the sum of these values. And then we are going to divide it by the number of these values. So we're going to count how many values we have here. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 values. So we're going to say this and divide it by 10. So that will give us our mean. So we press that on the calculator. It's 3 plus 5 plus 9 plus 12 plus 12 plus 13 plus 15 plus 19 plus 23 plus 26 over 10. So that gives us 137 over 10. So this will give us our mean. We're going to press this on the calculator and say 137 divided by 10. And that gives us 13,7. So 13,7 is our mean. So this is how we calculate the mean. Now we go to number two of the measures of central tendency, which is the mode. So the mode is the value that appears the most, the number that appears the most on the sequence that we have. So when we look here on the sequence or on the values that we have been given, the number that appears the most is 12 because it appears twice. So we're going to say the mode is 12. So for some notes on the mode, if you have been given a sequence that, um, let's say, for example, they are three threes and they are 12 twelves. So that means that we do not have a mode. If there are numbers that are repeating themselves, if there are two numbers that are repeating themselves, we are going to say that we do not have a mode. So you, you have to write no mode. You don't write zero because if you write zero, zero is a number, your number, I mean, your answer will be incorrect. So if you have um, been encountered to a case where 
you have two numbers that repeat themselves, you're going to say that we do not have a mode and your answer should be no mode. So we go forward. Now we go to the median. So the median is the value in on the middle, the middle value. So on these um, values that we have, the median is going to be the one that is on the middle. So how are we going to determine that? We're going to say one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. So you see that we do not have the number that is in the middle. The number that is in the middle is two numbers, which is 12 and 13. So what you have to do is that you have to say 12 plus 13 because they are the two numbers that are in the middle. So you have to divide it by two. So you say 12 plus 13, 12 plus 13 divide by two, sorry, 12 plus 13 and divided by two, it gives us 12,5. So this is our median. This means that our median lies between 12 and 13 and it is somewhere, the, our median is here. Our median is between 12 and 13 and the, our median is 12,5. So we are done with measures of central tendency and then we are now going to measures of spread. So when it comes to measures of spread, we ha I have also used the same values that we used on the measures of central tendency. So now uh, on measures of spread, we have the range, we have the five number summary, and we have the interquartile range. So now we're going to start with the range. The formula to calculate the range is the maximum number minus the minimum number the biggest number minus the minimum number. So when we look at our sequence here, our biggest number, the maximum number is 26. So you're going to say 26 minus the minimum number, which is three. So you're going to say 26 minus three, and then that will give you 23. So that means that the range of this number sequence is 23. We set the maximum number, which is 26, and minus the minimum number, which is 3. So we said 26 minus 3, and then it gave us 23. That is our range. So now we go to our five number summary. We go to our five number summary. Wait a minute. So the five number summary, we have the minimum. We are still working with this number sequence that we have been given. So we have to determine the minimum, the quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and the maximum. So we're going to write the minimum. We all know that the minimum is the smallest number in the sequence which is three. So that means that our minimum is three. So we're also going to write our maximum. Our maximum is the biggest number, which is 20, which is 26. So we have quartile one, we have quartile two, we have quartile three, right? So quartile two is the median. If you don't want to say quartile two, you can say the median. And then remember that the median of the sequence, we calculated it on the side on the measures of central tendency and the median was 12.5. So on Q2, you're going to write your median and say 12.5.
So now we, we have to find quartile 1 and quartile 2. So let me show you how we are going to do it. So we both know that the median, the median is between 12 and 13. So the median is here, right? Sorry, let me um, write it properly. So here it's 13. So the median is here. So where I have drawn the line is the median. So this median divides our sequence into two parts. We have the first part and the second part, right? So Q1 is the median of the first part. Remember, I told you that the median is between 12 and 13 because the numbers, we have 10 values and the median has to be between 12 and 13. And I told you that the median divides our number sequence into two parts, which is the first part that starts with 3 and ends with 12. And then our second part starts with 13 and ends with 26. So now we want to find the median of the first part, and that is going to be our quartile 1. So here is how we're going to do it. We're going to say 1, 1, 2, 2, and then that means that 9 is the median of the second part of our number sequence. So that means that quartile 1 is 9. So now that we have found quartile 1, we have to find quartile 3. So we go to the second part of the number sequence, right? Remember the median divided the sequence into two parts. We found the median for the first part and then now we have to find the median for the second part. So we're going to say 1, 1, 2, 2. So that means that our median here will be 19. So our Q3 is 19. So we have found our five number summary, the minimum, which is three, the, the maximum, which is 26, and then the quartile two, which is the median, which is between 12 and 13. And then we have found what? The Q1, which is the median of the first part of the sequence, which is 9, and then Q quartile 3, which is the median of the second part, which is 19. So now we go to the interquartile range, the IQR. So the formula to calculate the interquartile range, we say Q3 minus Q1. We say Q3 minus Q1. So our Q3 is 19. You're going to say 19 and minus our Q1, which is 9. Q1, which is 9. So 19 minus 9 is 10. So this means that our interquartile range is 10. So in data handling, we also have a thing called box and whisker plot or a box and whisker diagram, which is something that looks like this. So to write or to draw the box and whisker diagram, we use the five number summary of the sequence that we have been given. So this is the five number summary that we made earlier on in the video, and we are going to use it to draw the box and whisker diagram. So first, before you have to draw the, the box and whisker diagram, you have to use that number sequence that you have been given and make a number line with it. As you can see right here, I have made a number line with the numbers that we were given in the question, right? So we are going to draw something like this. So first thing first, you are going to draw the line for the minimum. Remember, the minimum is 3. Remember, we use the five number summary. So our minimum is 3. We are going to draw a line here on 3. We're going to draw a line which represents what? Our minimum, right? So now we have to go to 
quartile number one, which is number nine. So you're going to draw a line straight with nine. On the same line with nine, you draw another line for quartile number one, right? And then you are going to go and draw a line on the median, which is quartile number two. Remember that the median is 12.5, which is between 12 and 13. So you are going to draw a line between 12 and 13. So you're going to draw a line here. You're going to draw a line here. And then now we go to quartile number three. Quartile number three is 19. So you're going to draw a line on 19. You're going to draw a line on 19. And then when you're done with drawing the line on 19, we are going to the maximum. The maximum is 26. So you also draw the line on 26. You draw the line on 26. So now you have to make some sort of a rectangle here joining the Q, the Q1 and the Q3. You draw a line right here. You draw a line. And then you also draw another line here. And then you have to join the points together. So you're also going to draw another line here going here because remember we have to draw something that looks like this here and then we also draw another line here so this is how we draw the box and whisker diagram using the five number summary so here is our five number summary we have the minimum which is three the line for minimum and then we have um quartile number one or we can also name them and say minimum, right? And say quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and maximum. So this is our box and whisker diagram. This is how we work with data handling. Thank you for watching the video and please don't forget to subscribe as well as to study smart, not hard. May goodness and grace lead you to the great heights of success.